Welcome back everybody to our Intermediate and Advanced Civil 3D training series. In probably the last video that we talked about corridors, you'll notice I switched to a different drawing here to display some other related information. Now when we're drawing our corridors, uh, if, you, if any of you have tried to print out a corridor, it appears as a big black streak across the screen. We have all the, the sample locations, so these blue, the cyan colored lines running across the road, there are sample lines. And every time that we see a blue line, Civil 3D reapplies the cross section to provide us a nice smooth road. Now, depending on the sample width, the frequency of your stations, that can all be looked under corridor properties. And the parameters tab, we can go set all frequencies. And right now I have mine set to five meters. Five meters is quite a big distance. Now, when we're designing our corridor, generally the, the first few iterations, you want a larger sample. So it rebuilds and, and mod models and modifies faster. However, as we go to finalize our design, we have a much more detailed sampling station distance. So I've just switched mine to one meter here and it's going to take a few minutes to rebuild potentially. And it's going to create a lot more of these cyan colored lines. Now, when you're going to print your corridor, if we just completely freeze the corridor off, we're left with not much information. We, we might have our underlying surface, but there's no line work to go along with it. We can't see any of the travel lanes. We can't see median ditches. We can't see the edge of asphalts. We can't see the outside ditches or even our daylight lines. So this video is, is going to show you two ways that we can easily display these lines. We can pull them out of a corridor or we can even leave the corridor still turned on through some spe uh, specific commands and modifying some styles and different ways of showing these lines and leave the corridor on while you print it. We'll give it a few more minutes here to finish rebuilding and then I'll be back. All right, the corridor has finished rebuilding and as we see, uh, uh, section line across our corridor every meter. Now again, if I was to print this, it would be one ginormous mess. It would be, depending on your CTB file, it would be just a solid black object across the page. The, and we would see absolutely nothing. So there are two ways of getting information out of your corridor in order to display some line work. And then we could essentially freeze the corridor off. However, I haven't pulled any information out at this exact moment. So we we have some, no, no information here. We can't see any road edges, any edge of pavements, any ditch bottoms. So I'm gonna turn the corridor back on quickly and give Civil 3D a minute here. And then I'm gonna start running some commands. So the, the first way of doing this, we're going to extract some objects from the corridor, which we can then, if we want to project into a profile view. Now the objects we're going to extract, you got to be careful because they are feature lines and they will require a site potentially. And if you have other feature lines overlapping them, you could wind up with some issues if they're not on correct sites. So I'm going to click on my corridor and in the ribbon up here, we see feature lines from corridor. So I'm going to select that feature lines from corridor button and civil 3D then says, select the corridor feature line or all by regions or within a tracing polygon window. Now, if you select all, we're gonna get a giant dialog box that has way too many options and is gonna wind up with you extracting potentially the wrong items. So I am going to select them one by one. Now, as we hover, we see that there are feature lines that pop up, edge of paved shoulder, paved shoulder base, pave one, pave two, sub base, unpaved portions of it or base pave, etc. So first of all, you need to know which ones you want to extract. You need to know that this is the edge of the paved shoulder, the edge of traveled way, the side, the edge of the lane. This will be my crown of my road. This will be the edge of the traveled way, paved shoulder. And that is all set up in your assemblies. So in the previous video, when we made that primary collector road, we did set up a few options. Now, when I click on this piece, and that might be a bad one to click on. We'll click on the one down here. My right inside shoulder, we have some point codes at the bottom. 
and it looks like they maybe got changed a little bit. So the inside point code will be edge of pavement. The outside point code will be the edge of lane. So you might need to change these. Uh, come in and change all these point codes because the point codes are pre are what shows up in your corridor when you go to strike the objects. You might have some that say edge of lane and crown over top of each other and that's because these possibly were not set up. So again, the inside point code will be edge of lane. The outside point code will be crown. So the outside edge, outside, inside. This one, the inside point code is crown. The outside point code is edge of, this will be edge of lane. And, oh, I'm using the wrong, the, the assemblies that aren't even attached to my corridor. So if we look at these ones, these ones should be set up. Inside point code, edge of pavement. Outside is crown. There we go. And then we have here, inside crown, outside edge of lane. Edge of lane is the inside. Edge of pavement is the outside. And then we have our shoulder piece. So setting up these point codes for the actual pieces they are, inside would be closer to the marker of your your assembly outside would be farther away so inside would be this side and then this side and then this side for this piece would be this inside outside would be the opposite so once those are set up we can then come in and feature lines from corridor so i'm going to select the feature line from corridor i'm going to select my edge of paved shoulder it's one of the lines i want to see and i'm going to hit enter now this is going to be a lot of a lot of back and forth and doing lines one by one because just the edge of paved shoulder we see all five point codes come up we have the edge of paved shoulder top we have the edge of paved shoulder base pavement one pavement two sub base so all the various layers of your edge of shoulder uh, edge of paved shoulder now, when I'm extracting lines to show on, say, a drawing, I only want one. I want my edge of paved shoulder. Now, when we extract this, we can also place it on a site and create a new site. I'm just going to name it Highway Line Work. I can apply a style to it. So, say I wanted my paved shoulder to be magenta. The layer it's going to place it on, see feature line dash star, and we'll just hit extract. Now, it's going to take a little bit of time because it is pulling out a feature line with probably close to 60,000 or 6,000 grips on it. This is about a six kilometer long road. Now, if we click on it, so I've hit escape, I've clicked on it, we look in our properties window here in the left it's an auto corridor feature line so it's connected to the corridor if you update your corridor you modify your corridor that feature line is going to move and display properly now because it does have 6,000 grips there is a lot of information it might uh, be a little bit on the slow side so I'll do that one more time for the edge of the edge of the lane here so edge of traveled way I'm going to select it and hit enter doing one at a time so I know what I'm clicking on the site will be on highway line work and I want this to display as red we'll hit OK and extract and again give civil 3d a minute or two to do this because it is a very high density piece of geometry you're pulling out all right, that feature line is also extracted now. I can click on it and select it, although I probably shouldn't have done that because now I have to sit here for another 30 seconds to a minute and wait for it to select it. And the next step I was going to do was just to freeze the corridor off so we can actually see those two feature lines that we had extracted. I've already extracted the, the ditch and the daylight line. So we have a ditch line or a daylight line here, a bottom outside of ditch. Here is our new edge of pavement. Here's the edge of the traveled way. Now, when I pan over to my profile view here, we see that I have some, again, auto corridor feature lines automatically projected into the profile. And because there's so many grips, when I click on this, we got to sit here and wait again. So having a 10 meter space on your corridor obviously makes things function faster. 
It doesn't provide you the level of detail that you may need though. So say I wanted to add one of these lanes into this profile view. When I select the profile view, we get the option in the ribbon, project objects to profile view. So I'm gonna select that project objects. I'm going to pan over and I'm going to select the edge of the pavement. I'll hit enter. It asks me which feature lines. And again, if we name these, it, it might help us uh, farther down the line, naming these. The styles, the feature line magenta, elevation objects, I wanna use the object elevations. We'll hit okay. And probably give Civil 3D another 30 seconds here to get that piece of line work added in. And if we pan over to the profile, we see that we have a new uh, magenta feature line added to the profile. And we see that it's above my center line in some spaces and it's below my center line. So this is a, a highway project. There's a super elevation applied. So the, the left feature line or the right feature line, depending on which side of the road it is, could be higher or lower than the actual the original center line because that road super elevates. So that's one way that you can extract some objects from your corridor to display on your plan view without having the corridor itself turned on. Now the other way is probably a way that I prefer a little bit more. It's uh, it's a little bit more set up, but we also get, uh, we don't have to do the extraction. We don't have to run those previous commands. It's just a tiny bit more on the setup side of things. So I am going to unfreeze my corridor now and wait another 30 seconds. And then I'm going to select my corridor. And the very first thing I'm going to do is edit my corridor style. Now in the corridor style, I'm going to turn off region boundaries, override stations and assembly insertion stations. If we leave those uh, we'll just, we'll try turning the assembly insertion stations off first and it actually gives us what we want. So, uh, maybe don't turn everything off if you don't want it turned off, but all we really need is those assembly insertion stations and you're left with, uh, probably by default, just a bunch of red line work where your corridor is building. Now I'm going to freeze that surface off and freeze my surfaces off. My sections, any required labels, so we can actually see the corridor itself. Now, when a corridor builds, you have the assembly insertion stations, those cyan colored lines, every one, five or 10 meters. You also have red, yellow, green, blue, whatever color feature lines that track along the corridor itself to define the different items. So in the center of the road here, I have my median ditch. Then, like I said before, edge of pavement, we have the edge of lane, edge of lane, edge of lane, edge of lane, edge of pavement, the ditch on the right hand side, and then daylight on the right hand side. So if I go into corridor properties, and I go under the feature lines tab, every feature line that we could potentially extract with the extract objects or from corridor, will be in this list. Now we see here that I have um, specific styles. I've got uh, feature line, no plot. This one essentially is turned off. So if I come into the edit tab under the display tab, this is not visible because I don't wanna see edge of paved shoulder sub base. My ditch in, and there should be a ditch out as well somewhere in this list ditch in, ditch out, those ones I have both displaying as a blue feature line. My daylight fill, daylight cut, and daylight itself, so these three, are displayed with a green feature line. So that's why we have colors on my corridor where you might not necessarily have colors on your corridor. I don't wanna see crown sub base, pavement, pavement one, or base. So it looks like here, these uh, base, pave one, pave two, and sub should actually be set to the no plot. 
So it's as simple as coming in here and telling Civil 3D to do the no plot. I may have missed one. My crown is displayed as a feature line red. My edge of paved shoulder is magenta. Paved shoulder base is no plot. This one should also be set to no plot. Edge of traveled way is red. Those are all set to no plot. Uh, the hinge, hinge cut, hinge fill is specifically related to ditch related stuff. So you might need those turned on to blue or whatever color you want to display. My lane is set to red. Lane base is no plot. Uh, lane pavement one will be set to no plot as well. And then my left median ditch, right median ditch are set to blue. So I have them displaying as feature lines on my drawing here. And the, the corridor itself is turned on. The corridor itself is visible. I can go and print this corridor and not be greeted with the giant black smear across the screen because of my corridor sampling locations. Now, when this finishes up, we're gonna switch over to a viewport tab. All right, I've switched over to my viewport tab. And as we can see here, my corridor is turned on. If I zoom in and click on it, we see that we have corridor and the name of the corridor. And all that corridor line work is displaying. I can print this and it's going to print as per setup in the styles. So I have pre-built styles for all these feature lines. Under the settings tab, general, multi-purpose, feature line styles, I've got feature lines that print blue, but feature lines that use the blue color but print black. So again, CTB files, STB files, control how the way your objects print. If I look at this one specifically, my color 170 is set to print blue. My color blue is set to print black. So color five actually prints black for me. So I can go and print this now with my corridor turned on and it displays the line work that I have set up. So that video is showing two different ways of, of displaying your corridor and gathering information from your corridor, putting it into the profile view. Unfortunately, doing it this way here, we can't just easily add any of these lines to the corridor view. So some of them we may have to still extract. So the first, op uh, the first option, extracting objects from your corridor, and then we can just freeze the corridor off and not have it display. The second option was actually modifying the corridor properties itself to change the feature lines inside of the corridor and how they display and how they look.